Oh, hey YouTube, what's up? Just uh, pour myself a little congratulations because my Raspberry Pi Game Boy is complete. Well, it's not complete, but it's feature complete. So it's all in a box and it works. Um, but yeah, you'll see more in uh, this close up video. Here you go. Here she is. Or he, because it's a Game Boy. So yeah, got a uh, Raspberry Pi 2 stuffed in there. And uh, so you can see it, I went with the uh, the purple SNES color scheme for the buttons, because you know, Super Nintendo, my favorite console of all time. Um, in the video, the, uh, the case actually looks a little gray, but um, I can tell you it is 100% white. Um, and then uh, on the back here, we got four more buttons. So, you know, L and R. And then uh, I went with buttons from a uh, GBA SP, so you know, Game Boy Advance SP case. Um, because, uh, well, one, I had them available. Uh, I did a, uh, a case swap with a uh, GBA 101. So uh, I could get a, a nicer screen. Um, so I just had this laying around. And then uh, also I could get them nearly flush with the case since they're not going to be used that often. And then uh, also good you know good thing about these is that they are very thin they're they're very uh low profile, so I was able to uh, get those in there um, and then uh, in my previous video, I mentioned how with these buttons here, I was anticipating difficulty, and I did run into difficulty with these buttons. I actually ended up having to um, pretty much shave them in half almost. Um, I, uh, I filled them with hot glue first because these are mostly hollow. So I filled them with hot glue and then clamped them down and uh, went at them with my Dremel and cut them basically in half. And that cut out a lot of the, uh, the height issue that I was uh, anticipating. And then here you can see that I have a uh, what looks like an authentic D-pad. And I pulled this out of a uh, crappy USB NES D-pad, and uh, it fits beautifully. Also from that NES D-pad, uh, or sorry, the NES controller, um, I had red A and B buttons, but they didn't go with the uh, SNES scheme that I'm going for here, so I didn't end up using those. Um, so as you can tell right here, and you know, like I mentioned, it has rough edges because I've used hot glue on on it to uh, temporarily hold it together, and you know it's just a temporary fix. It, just, it works for now, and uh, I can still pull apart the uh, the hot glue and uh, open up the case if I need to. And I'm going to need to, because uh, you know, I have some issues here. Um, one, you can't tell what thing is off, but um, the screen itself is just a little bit skewed. And that's bugging me. And then um, the, uh, I've got the USB port here and the link port. And something happened when I was mounting it. And one, it's at a weird angle. And two, I don't know why, but it's really hard to get stuff in there. I mean, you know, I've been using this uh, USB controller over there to, uh, um, you know, edit config files and whatnot. And it's just a, a pain to get that thing shoved in there. And then um, another thing that I want to do is, uh, you know, I've got the uh, Power Boost 500 charger down in there, and. Uh, I really should have gone with the 1000 because there's the uh, PowerBoost 500 charger and there's a PowerBoost 1000 charger and 
the 1000 is the way to go. I should have just spent the extra five dollars. Um, so, yeah, is uh, you know, um, I've, I've been doing a lot of editing of the uh, config files and you know, just having this plugged in and uh, charging and running it uh well, while I was doing that while I was editing config files it just it shut down on me I mean that was after hours and hours of use but um, it's still yeah it, it can't sustain charging and running at the same time so when I plug it in while it's running all that does for me right now is just extend the battery life so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's turn this little guy on we got the nice little uh, switch up top there and uh, here, here he goes, booting into RetroPie. And uh, see, I, I, I spent a lot of time the past like two days working with this thing on uh, you know, getting uh, the, uh, you know, the all, all the controls working basically. And it's uh, I mean, it's not so much the actual you know, button controls, but the uh, specific menu controls for RetroArch, and you know RetroArch is the the emulator that runs basically everything in here. So getting you know like menu stuff to work, that's been a real pain because like there are lots of tutorials out there that uh, you know they'll, they'll tell you all about how to do it but they're telling you about it with USB controllers and I'm not using USB I'm using GPIO and um, I'm using uh, you know, the, the GPIO turn that mode. the GPIO that emulates the, the, uh, the keyboard and there's no one out there asking well how do I change you know X setting with my keyboard because they all have keyboards with more than 14 keys. And you know, for me, well, since this is emulated keyboard, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 keys on the keyboard. So that's not working out too well. So I had to go in and figure out how to do all that crap. That was a pain. Um. Yeah, here we got it running uh, Castlevania Seventh of the Night, one of my favorite games of all time. And, oh man, I just love this game. And it runs everything very smoothly. And obviously, I can't play this with one hand, but you know. Yep, no, like, I can't get up there with one hand, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, so I finally figured out how to make it work in the, uh, the controls so that I can hold down the select button as my modifier and do things like, you know, <laughs> volume up and volume down and go into the menu and, uh, Exit the menu actually. Here we go. Zoom. There you go. Actually, exit the end. Oh, also, I can save state and load state. And then exit emulator. There we go. Now I'm back to uh, emulation station. There it is. So, yeah. I'm uh, I'm really excited about this thing. I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's come out so far. I mean, there are definitely a lot of issues, but you know, it's good, especially for a first attempt, and this being my first Raspberry Pi build, and the fact that I've never worked with Linux ever in my entire life before. So yeah. So there we go. That's uh, 
It's a little close up of my Raspberry Pi Game Boy. And man, I love this little guy. He's really cool. Um, this, the Super Nintendo look to him, it's beautiful. Um, I, I know there are rough edges, but you know, for my first Raspberry Pi build, for my first, you know, you know, really getting into Linux kind of a thing, I'm just, uh, I love this. He's just, he's really cool. And uh, here, here's my favorite part. Well, one of my favorite parts. Let me hit the lights. Check that out. The case is so thin that he glows. Ah! <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So there we go. So yeah, that's my Raspberry Pi Game Boy. And uh, so I'm going to be, uh, you know, making the build log. The build log's coming soon. Um, with that, you can expect, you know, where I got all the parts, you know, how much all the parts cost, and a little bit of, like, this is how I made everything work. Um, I'll especially go into detail about the uh, the GPIO. Because that was a pain, let me tell you. Oh man. Um, so yeah, here he is. This is my uh, Super Pie Boy Advance SPX 1000. Yeah. And uh, all right. So if you guys have any uh, comments or questions, leave them in the comments. I'll uh, be more than happy to answer them. Alright guys, have a good one.